Family of slain Auckland dairy owner Arun Kumar have been left devastated by the verdicts handed to the teens involved in his death. One of them was found guilty of manslaughter while the other walked free. The Kumars feel Arun's life has been taken with seemingly little punishment for those responsible. To talk us through the case, Otago Law Professor Mark Hennigan joins me now. Mark, thanks so much for joining us uh, in Dunedin this morning. Um, you know, justice has to be seen to be done. That is that is one of the vital principles of justice, our justice system. Do you think yesterday justice was seen to be done? Yeah, first of all, I'd also like to offer my great sympathies to the Kumar family. It must be absolutely devastating for them to go through this whole tragedy and then go through the, through the whole trial. Yeah, I think justice was done. Um, I believe that we had superb lawyers on both sides. Um, the Crown Prosecutor Kieran Rafty is an outstanding prosecutor, excellent defence lawyers, and one of the most senior judges, Justice Graham Lang, being the, the trial judge giving directions to the jury. Um, one of the young men has been found guilty of manslaughter, which is a, a very, very serious charge. Uh, the other one, um, they dropped charges. They could have found him guilty, mm. no doubt, of attempted aggravated robbery and, and probably, probably uh, as a party to uh, assault with intent to rob. But the, the Crown decided to drop those charges. I don't know quite why, but they did. So there would have been some charge that would have, would have stuck in that, in that can case. We, can we talk about that decision now? I, I can only assume that the Crown decided to drop those charges because it would give more impetus to the more serious charge. Um, in hindsight, of course, you'd have to say that was a mistake, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think it was a mistake because I think the family wanted to get something there and they would have those charges would have been upheld, I'm, I'm pretty confident. But they've obviously decided, and sometimes juries can get confused if you have too many charges, a lot for them to follow, mm. a lot for them to understand. So they probably thought we'll go for the, for the bigger charges. But obviously what the jury have decided, I think, with, with the younger boy, um, he was the lookout, remember, so he was standing there as the lookout. And obviously what they've decided, I mean, he's sort of aiding and abetting what the other boy is doing. And obviously what they've decided on the evidence was he didn't know the essential facts. I mean, he didn't know the other boy had a, had a knife, but obviously there was no clear intent before they went in, in terms of the evidence, um, that they were going to use that knife to actually do harm. They may have been going to use it as a threat or something like that, but not to actually kill someone. So they're, they're probably saying, well, he just didn't know enough that that was going to happen, so therefore we can't really found, find him guilty of a party to manslaughter. The, which is, you know, on the evidence is probably fair enough. The, the Kumars um, put their case, the family of Aaron put their case very well afterwards. I think they summed up their emotions very succinctly afterwards. I mean, essentially they were saying they have had to sit through the harrowing evidence, reliving the, that, that, those last few hours so yeah. many times, whilst at the same time feeling that, they sh that, that, that people are trying to make them feel sorry for the people that have perpetrated those crimes. Um, that, that must have been spectacularly hard and actually in a way insulting for them. Yeah, I can understand that perfectly. I put myself in the shoes of the Kumars. You've lost a lovely, loving family member. It would be absolutely awful. But, but the role of the defence lawyer here, I think, is to be remembered here, Paul. The defence lawyer has to put the case on behalf of their clients. And clearly there were background factors with regard to, the, to these young men that were relevant in terms of their state of mind, particularly the one who was convicted of manslaughter. Well, let's, can Obviously, we just very quickly talk about how relevant that is? Um, because we, we know that he went in there, he was armed, he went in there to commit a crime. All of these things are, are, are not con contentious at all. Um, we know also that he, he, he killed uh, Aaron Kumar. That's not contentious either. How is that not murder? Well, I think what's happened here is the, the defence team put up the defence of self-defence. Uh, they put up the argument, and, and the evidence has to support it, and the jury has to hear all the evidence, obviously, that when the, um, Mr Kumar came towards him, he felt he had to defend himself. And he's obviously acted in a way um, that was impulsive because there was evidence that he did have impulsive behaviour due to a, a mm. car accident a few mm. years earlier. So he's reacted in a way that he thought was best in the circumstances. I think what the jury have decided that, yes, there was a self-defence situation, but that's why he was found guilty of manslaughter because normally self-defence is a complete defence. Mm. But what they've decided was he used excessive force. It's the excessive force that he used in the circumstances is why he's been convicted of manslaughter. Still a very serious charge. I mean, people forget that manslaughter also carries, it's not mandatory. It's a, it's a wide it also range. It carries a maximum yes. penalty of life imprisonment, yes. Yeah, so so yeah. It's, it's a pretty serious offence. I think we should not forget that. Mark, I thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know it was a cold day in Dunedin today, and I thank you very much for taking the time to come out from your home. Otago University Law Professor Mark Hennigan.